And joining us now as we take a look at the weather and what is happening in this week ahead and also a bit of a recap for what we saw the last few days. Some severe weather, some pretty big hailstones in parts of the country. Rainfall, though, we might be turning a little bit drier as we move forward. We're going to talk about all of that here today. We welcome in our good friend Eric Stodgrass with Nutrien Ag Solutions. Eric, always good to talk to you, my friend, and Hope you've had a, a good weekend, and I know for some folks, as I alluded to, a bit of a rough weekend across parts of the Corn Belt, wasn't it? It was, and, and what was interesting was that we saw a whole lot of Canadian wildfire smoke mixed into a lot of these yeah. big storms. And, you know, I keep getting messages and just hearing, and I can see it across the maps. There's a lot of folks out there that are saying, man, you keep talking about these storms, and I see them. They're coming through, but they seem to be hitting my buddy's farm or grandpa's farm or dad's farm and not mine. And, uh, you know, that, that's where we are in the year. It's that time of year where we have these highly localized, heavy rainfall events. And you're right, some of those storms put down some pretty monstrous hail across the country. In fact, take a look at this map here. This is just the last three days. So from the 15th to the 18th, and uh, Kansas has really stolen the show twice. Two massive supercells have rolled through there, almost near Dodge City, both of them. And uh, some of the baseball size hail that's come out of that's done a tremendous amount of damage. Nebraska's been hit. Southern Iowa's been hit. Parts of Illinois have been hit. Kansas, or, uh, excuse me, Missouri. I mean, Missouri uh, took a beating just here in the last 24 hours with hail. And to be honest, Jesse, I'm worried about Missouri again today. I think there's the potential for the storms that kind of survive the night coming out of parts of Nebraska uh, into northern Missouri are going to sweep across the state later today. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the drought they've endured, we don't want to see any sort of strong, you know, wind damage that some uh, some of these storms could possibly produce. So, yeah, it's a, it's a summer thunderstorm regime. And unfortunately, that means that these storms are damaging. It is. And it's uh, part of it as well. I'll uh, flip maps. It, it kind of correlates with the last 72 hours of precipitation as well, for the most part. Anyway, you can see, like you mentioned, that area in Kansas, those supercells around Dodge City, some pretty heavy rains, too, with that hail. Uh, but to your point, this all kind of goes with that summertime feel where it's the haves and the have nots when it comes to rainfall. And, and moving forward this week, it sounds like it's going to be a lot more have nots than haves, it sounds like. Yeah, I think that's going to be the risk. And as you just look at this map of the last 72 hours, notice parts of the Dakotas. In fact, I'm going up to Pierce, South Dakota tonight. And then you look at Minnesota, Wisconsin, Northern Illinois. Now, some of those places got great rains in the last week, but we turned a little bit drier. Well, the only thing that we have to compound this conversation with is what are the temperatures doing? Because this morning throughout the Midwest, we had lows in some places that were in the upper 40s. Uh, so low 50s, upper 40s, lows. I mean, you're not you're not hurting a corner. You're not hurting the beans with those kind of temperatures. Mm -mm. But if that starts to shift around and we see this drier forecast coming in for much of the Midwest, uh, it begins to uh, just start to give us the risk because here we are. A lot of the crop is either not finished with pollination or has finished. Uh, and uh, some of it still has a ways to go. But anytime we get heat or, or dryness in this time of year, it just starts to get us worried. And I think the biggest problem, Jesse, is that we're already vulnerable, right? I mean, we endured the drought that lasted through May and most of June. So we know that the crop, um, you know, we know the crop wants to survive, but at the same time, there's only so many times you can punch it. And so if we do see some drier conditions, I think a lot of folks are going to see the, the risk on the, uh, on the downside there. You mentioned the wildfire smoke as well, getting caught up in these storms. And I just want to ask you, we, we've heard a little bit about this, how much do you think that that smoke could be impacting development of our corn and beans and, and other crops across the country, Eric? Yeah, I think about it in two ways. Uh, first of all, that smoke can often serve as the what we call the condensation nuclei that storms need. But when you have so much of it, it oftentimes makes the atmosphere compete for the available moisture. And what I mean by that is sometimes you have too much of that stuff in the atmosphere you can't develop more storms. They're all kind of clustered in certain little areas rather than being more widespread. That, that could be an impact. I need to think more on that. Mm -hmm. The other side of this is what is it doing to just not letting sunlight get through, down to the, the canopy? And I've talked to several people about this, and most of the agronomists I've talked to and the, and, the, and the crop scientists I've talked to have said they don't think it's had a major impact yet. And I'm not to go against them, but we did have a lot of smoke around the solstice. We've had a lot of it throughout the month of July. So you just have to wonder if some of those very photosensitive crops like soybeans um, are going to end up having uh, something on the downside uh, in terms of, of yield potential because we just weren't blasting it with good, good clean sunshine, right? And so uh, those fires in Canada are not out. And we mm -hmm. continue to see the smoke move into the southeast today and up the east coast after just barreling through the Midwest over the last couple of days. 
don't know about you, but I've stepped outside twice in the last uh, three days and it smelled like a, a campfire. And that's something we're not used to in the Midwest. It's just not. And you go out West, they talk about it all the time. You go to parts of Canada, they, they're, they're used to that. No one wants it, but um, it is something that uh, is a bit more familiar. So yeah, it's been Im impactful. And now uh, you talk about the smoke and how those fires aren't out. Are, are they going to get any meaningful rains in the prairies here up in Canada in the next few days to maybe help put some of those fires out, Eric? Yeah, well, possibly. There's better chances of storms kind of coming through the Canadian prairie, but it's not drought busting rain. I mean, most mm -hmm. of the Canadian prairie has seen less than 40% of its normal rainfall in the last 60 days. And remember, these fires are actually north of that. They're in the boreal forest, and that's why they're so hard to put out. You know, they're in British Columbia. They're in northern Alberta, or they've been at times in Quebec and Ontario in the forested areas. So without the ability to get in there and really do a, a, a proper job of containing them with the right kind of firefighting equipment, they just continue to burn. And there's no real shift in the atmosphere to say, hey, put these things out in a big way. There's storms, but... Most of those storms are on the other side of the mountains. They've been, I mean, have you, did you see the hail pictures from the uh, big storms in Alberta? I mean, just ripping yeah. up crops and destroying property. I, I'm, this has been a year of hail like I've not seen in a long time. In fact, I, I probably have to go back to 2011 since I've seen hail like this. Well, Eric, I think about it. We're talking smoke. We got potential force of thunderstorm activity, severe weather today. We're talking as well. I know we got heat in many areas of the country, extreme heat in some cases across the, the southwest, the desert southwest and more, but also the tropics. We start to watch the tropics more this time of year and to the Pacific Ocean. I know there's some typhoons going on right now and whatnot. So there, there's a lot going on both in the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. What's some of the latest you could share there? Yeah, so let's let's take that in two ways. You talked first about the, the heat that's in the Southwest. That ridge is yeah. gonna open. I always, I always say it's gonna flex. I mean, it just opens up farther to the North. And as it does so, uh, it's probably gonna shift its position a bit East. And I don't like that because that starts to bring in the heat risk to us here in the Midwest. I think by the time we get through this weekend, we're going to talk about next week seeing a lot of low 90s for highs and those overnight lows staying up there, not like they were in the 50s, but instead maybe in the upper 60s, low 70s at times. So that's another source of stress. But we're at the time of year where the tropics can undo everything. We, we can have an outlook. We can say this is what we think August is going to look like. And then there's a tropical system that gets into that really, really hot water that's in the Gulf of Mexico or the Western Atlantic. And it blows up an entire forecast or you get a big typhoon that's going toward Japan, but it moves north, gets into the Bering Sea as a big low pressure system, blows the whole pattern out of the water. So this is uh, remains a very unpredictable time. But I'll tell you, the ocean temperatures in the Atlantic right now are very, very wet, uh, warm, excuse me. And uh, we're watching some dust coming off the Sahara, but sometimes that's a precursor to getting the Sahara uh, and uh, the, the boundary between the Sahara Desert and the Sahel to kick off storms. And those are the storms that eventually become hurricanes. So I am not liking the outlook for this hurricane season at all because of how warm the water is. And so we, we've got multiple components to be watching here that are going to affect the pattern from now until we finish this crop. Well, Eric, a lot of things to think about. Final thoughts before we let you go here this week. Anything we have a touched on or, or anything else you want to just reiterate to folks as they're thinking about what's going on with this forecast here this week and beyond? Sure. I would just say we, we, we've watched an El Nino develop all, um, all summer, and yeah. it's still there. It's, it's, it's actually strengthening. Uh, the ocean temperatures keep getting hotter in the central Ecuador Pacific. Uh, there is, if that takes over as the dominant force going into late summer and early fall, we have wet risks going forward that far out. I'm talking about the possibility of wet harvest and an active hurricane season, despite El Nino. Uh, so I think we need to, uh, I think we really need to pay attention to how this crop finishes and just remember that it's been, you know, it's been knocked down a few times. I'll tell you, Jesse, I don't know about you, but I've got this running narrative in my head. Do you remember when we were kids, there was a, a, a Nintendo game called Mike Tyson Super Punch-Out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get knocked down all these times with little Mac keeps getting back up. And I feel like I'm sitting here hitting A, B, A, B, A, B to get him back up. And the atmosphere is throwing another punch here. So I don't know why I'm thinking about that, but I, I had a Nintendo as a kid. And, and hey. I think that is, uh, <laughs> that's the way I feel right now. I feel like I'm a little Mac. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I think that's a great way to describe this, a great correlation. Now I want to go play Nintendo. Thanks a lot, buddy. I appreciate <laughs> <Sorry>. it. <laughs> you can sign up for Eric's uh, weekly weather newsletter, as well as uh, check out some of the latest uh, weather forecasts online, ag-wx.com.
As always, Eric Snodgrass with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Appreciate the time. Have an awesome week. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good.